first of all, good morning, everyone. Thank you all for coming. My name is Daniel Osterlin. I'm the author of the international bestseller, The True Story of the Bilderberg Group and Shadow Masters. Just to answer your question, Representative uh, Borgesio, um, Switzerland is, uh, you went to Switzerland and uh, you were assaulted by people in Switzerland, but Switzerland is not Europe. Switzerland is Switzerland. It's like going to the moon. It has nothing to do with Europe at all. The laws are different. The country is different. Their philosophy is different. It's the epicentralist known of the Venetian black nobility. So Switzerland has nothing to do with anything we're seeing here on the European level. Now, Monty, um, to answer your other question, is a lackey who has been put there to prepare for the next stage of the banker coup when the euro crisis will be hijacked to concentrate even more power into the hands of the very people who caused this crisis in the first place. Mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> said that simply and without mincing words. Unless we act now together as people of the planet Earth against the lonesome creatures who are trying to impose the will of the very few against the will of the many, the chain reaction disintegration of the economies of the transatlantic system is virtually inevitable. The global financial system has totally broken down. A chain reaction collapse of phony financial assets is underway across the entire region. The entire transatlantic system is imploding under the weight of one to two quadrillion dollars in speculative financial assets, which can never be paid no matter how many multi-trillion dollar bailouts are imposed by the Obamas, the Blairs, the Camerons, or the Sarkozy's. All they can do, and this is what they're doing, is murder the population of subject nations with austerity while vaporizing any semblance of national sovereignty. This, of course, has been predicted by a forecast by American physical economist Lyndon LaRouche quite some time ago. Now, the reason we're here today is obviously to talk about uh, Bilderberg Group, Trilateral Commission, Goldman Sachs, and, of course, the European crisis um, and the euro. Now, this is a very different kind of war which we have faced before. This is an asymmetrical war in a sense that governments are not running this operation, but rather world corporations. I'll repeat this. This is an asymmetrical war. Governments are not controlling this. They have lost, completely lost control, and you've seen this on the world stage. It's a war. It's an operation run by world company corporations. In other words, what you're seeing right now is a government not run by corporations running the operation. Let me give an example, Italy. Now, we've seen a lot of Mario Monti on the covers of major newspapers and major magazines trying to give this unelected fool legitimacy. Now, Monti is a bastard child of fondy financial interests. Not only is Monti a former European commissioner, but he's also an international advisor to Goldman Sachs, one of the biggest and most powerful corporations on Wall Street, as well as European chairman of David Rockefeller's Trilateral Commission, and also leading member of the Bilderberg Group. Now, Monty is a lackey, again, who has been put there to prepare the next stage of the banker's coup in this uh, uh, European crisis. But he's not the only one. Um, the new president of the European Central Bank, Mario Draghi, a former vice chairman of Goldman Sachs International, and, of course, the European Central Bank is now being hailed as the entity to save the Eurozone by bailing out Italy, by bailing out France, and by bailing out Spain. So you're seeing Monti, who is Goldman Sachs, who is Bilderberg, who is Trilateral Commission. You're seeing Draghi, who is uh, uh, Bilderberg, Sachs, Goldman Sachs, and Trilateral Commission. You're seeing Tremonti, who is a member of, the, uh, obviously, the Bilderberg Group as well. So you're seeing also the, the same Goldman Sachs, which way, way back when, prettied up the Greek statistics, making possible Greece's entry into the Euro group. You're seeing a pattern here, no? You have Goldman Sachs, one of the most powerful corporations on Wall Street. This is what's called the World Company Limited. It's not about one world government. It's not about an, an all-seeing eye. It's about corporations with a lot more power than any government on the planet. And Goldman Sachs, as Mario Borghesio said, is a very good example of that. And as much as Mario Monti will try to distance himself from his role and his position and his activities at Goldman Sachs, these things are simply inevitable. He was, he is, and he will always be a member of these private, unelected organizations who basically rule the world from behind the scenes. 
Now, Greek, Italian, and soon to come Spanish bailouts, of course, is a facade of these operations. What they're trying to do is to blow up the system by instead of allowing Greece to reorganize its money, they're imposing that Greece be used, that the Greek debt be bailed out by Europe. But then, as I said before, that debt is absolutely worthless. Just like the Irish debt is worthless, just like the Italian debt is worthless, just like the Spanish debt is absolutely worthless, it's garbage. It's monopoly money. So asking Europe, which is in the throes of a financial meltdown, to absorb an unpayable debt, which they never, ever can repay, means you're going for sure to destroy Europe. And it is being done on purpose because nobody, not even Barroso, who's a moron, believes that Greece, Ireland, Portugal, and Spain can be saved. Now, there are strings attached to a lot of these operations of trying to save these nations. And the strings attached to this particular bailout, which, is, which we're seeing right now, will accomplish precisely what the Eurocrats wanted all along. A close-knit political union, as Merkel called for recently, a federal superstate at the cost of European nation states, surrendering control over their economies to unelected United uh, Europe dictators like Herman Van Rompuy and his moronic sidekicks, Jose Manuel uh, Barroso. Now, back in 2009, at the Bilderberg Conference, and I reported this in 2009 with my Bilderberg report, I said that one of the solutions to the crisis, well, the people who met at Bilderberg, and amongst them, of course, Monty and Draghi and Trimonti and all these individuals, um, were well, the idea of creating two Europes. On the one hand, the Europe, the first division, where you have the France, Germany, et cetera, nations who can actually pay their way, and on the other hand, the pigs, the Spains, the Portugals, etc. And we're seeing this right now. This is one of the key plans being put together by the people from behind the scenes. I have a lot more to say, but I think I'm going to stop as I think there are people who want to ask questions. Thank okay. you. I'd like to ask Mr. Esselin, what is the significance of today's news about the world's central banks combining to step in, in effect, as lenders of last resort? Thank you. I think we said, uh, as I said in the beginning of my, uh, uh, my conference, the system is broken, it's dead. There's very little you can do. There's simply not enough money in the world to save, uh, uh, save the, the speculative uh, bubble. We're talking about one to two quadrillion dollars worth in, 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 in worthless uh, uh, debt. So no matter what you do, no matter how many trillions of dollars, uh, euros or, or rupees you print, you can actually never pay this thing off. So it's irrelevant. Um, I'd like to uh, address what uh, you said uh, uh, earlier about the, uh, um, what the question which was asked by the journalist uh, combine a couple of things here. Um, one of the things that we're seeing right now, uh, uh, when you asked about Italy and scooters and, 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 and growth in northern Italy, um, it's apparent on the world stage. We're talking about zero growth. The concept is zero growth. 300 years ago, circles around uh, Gottfried Leibniz, a genius, German genius who invented calculus, they knew that progress and growth are directly proportional to population density. So if you want to increase the population and you have technological progress and growth, you're going to have more people on the planet. Consequently, if you're the elite, and you see the point is that we're living on a small planet, Earth, with limited natural resources. So if you're Rockefeller, which is just a, me a metaphor for powerful people, and you want to make sure that you have the natural resources for yourself, such as water, you know, you don't want Earth, planet Earth, to have 40, 80, 100 billion people. There's just simply not enough natural resources. So what they're doing right now is logical, all right? It's logical. They're destroying the world economy on purpose. Rockefeller doesn't need to sell you shoes, okay? He has all the money in the world. They got all the money in the world. They got quadrillions of dollars in cash, land. Okay, cows, what they need is for you and I to die so that they can drink their water. You know, I cannot say it any clearer than that. Which is one of the reasons we're seeing so much in the press on daily basis, the phrase zero growth. If you have no growth, if you have no development in any technological or any other way, there's going to be a decline in the population base. That's one of the reasons they're talking about this. That's why they're destroying the world economy on purpose. And you have people like Monty, and you have people like uh, uh, Draghi, and you have people like Papademos, all of these individuals that are there, but they're caretakers. They know they're actors on stage. They know the role they play because, again, Monty goes to all these meetings. He's an insider, all right? 
He understands what's going on. One of the reasons he's chosen to actually become a prime minister, and he was chosen, he wasn't elected. He's a bastard child. He, he was elected, he was chosen to, you know, to be the prime minister or caretaker of Italy because they know they can trust him to do what he's told to do. Just like they can trust Barroso to do what he's told to do. Just like they can trust Van Rompuy to do exactly the same thing. The people who are in power on the European level, on the countries, corporations, governments, you know, international organizations such as World Bank, International Monetary Fund, all of these individuals, they're their people. Nobody who actually thinks of a nation state republic, you know, which has given us everything we have in the last 650 years, from constitution to our own currency, nobody who actually is pro nation state republic actually is in any positions of power. You know, if that had been the case, this man would have been the president of Italy. Ringrazio molto Daniel Lesti, che ti assicuro che lo mancheremo periodicamente di far giungere al Parlamento europeo la sua voce indipendente.